Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, I am ready for the event. Korean Aerospace Administration, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Extension. Uh, can you hear me? Korean Aerospace Administration. Hello. 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 Welcome aboard Hello, the Johnny International Kim. Space Station. I'm looking forward Hello. to our conversation. Hi. Hello. 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 I think it's going to be a great I'm day. Uh, it's a great day aboard the International Space Station. I'm, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. I'm Jin Bak of Korea Aerospace Administration. I'm honored and excited to have this opportunity to talk with you, a real spaceman, for the first time. Now with me, I have a CASAS administrator and two other officers. Johnny Kim, could you please introduce yourself to everyone? Yes. Hello, everyone, uh, Casa. It's an honor uh, to be here with you today. My name is Johnny Kim. I'm a NASA astronaut and a naval officer, and I'm currently on board the International Space Station orbiting our planet 250 miles above the surface. Uh, I've been aboard for almost six months, and the mission we're on right now is Expedition 73. Yeah. Oh, so. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the core. Yeah, administration, uh, third, would you uh, uh, like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yes. I am Youngbin Yun, uh, CASA administrator. It is my great pleasure to meet you. I would like to express my sincere gratitude on behalf of the Korean people for taking the time to be with us today, despite your busy schedule. I believe that the words you share with us today will be meaningful guidance and inspiration for our future generations who dream of a space. It's an honor to be here with you today, sir, and the very strong words. I, there's so much to learn and explore about space, and I'm very, very uh, inspired by what Korea is doing to push forward that envelope. For today's interview, CASA collected a question from the public for you. Out of all the questions we received, we selected some interesting questions. Are you ready for the questions? I am ready for the questions. Uh, shall we start with the first question, administrator? Oh. Yeah, it's the core. Uh, <laughs> yes, shall I? <laughs> this is a question from a first year middle school student. The student became curious after reading an article in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, yes, I also read that article. Uh, by the way, uh, hello, uh, this is Song Woo Kim from CASA. Uh, in April, uh, the Wall Street Journal published an article titled Navy SEAL, Harvard Doctor, NASA Astronaut, Don't Tell Mom About This Overachiever. Uh, I heard it ranked as the number one most read article among readers. Sounds great. Here um, is the student question. What inspired you to make uh, the transition from a medical doctor 
to an astronaut and how have your previous experiences helped you in carrying out your current mission? You know, I've always been inspired by service. The original reason I wanted to join the military was to be able to serve others and be a protector. It's something that I really wanted to identify with. And that same yearning continued on through my professions. I never had any plans to be an astronaut or a medical doctor, but through life, I kept an open mind and those opportunities arose. And I found that they all fit my original desire, which is still true today, is to do my part in making the world a better place. That's what I'm super inspired by. Yeah, uh, that's an amazing story, I think. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, as South Korea is striving to become a space powerhouse, uh, many Korean youth are looking up to you and nurturing their dreams of uh, becoming astronauts. Uh, so they are curious about the training for astronauts like you. Uh, what training was the most memorable for you? Uh, so the, the training that's most memorable for me was, so, it, you know, I think the most important thing, especially as technology moves forward and we've become more automated, is how strong our interpersonal relationships can be how effective we can be as team members. And so for that, the most memorable experience for me was an outdoor leadership course that we had, where we had pretty difficult missions to do as a group together in an outdoors, austere environment. And through that, we became a lot closer because I feel from personal experience that challenges when you work through them together make you grow stronger. Okay, uh, I think it's so hard. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, uh, shall we move on to the next question? How do you do? This is Eunyoung Kim. It's an honor to be talking with you today. The public has sent many questions about life on the International Space Station. On your Instagram, we can see the scenes like giving a colleague a haircut and making space sushi with gochujang and rice. <laughs> While these scenes might feel unusual because of the space environment, but they are strangely familiar to Koreans. We are very interested in your daily routine in space. Could you briefly share it with, with us? Yes, yeah, so every day here on space is a blessing, and it's also really unique. Most mornings we wake up with a daily conference where we do it right here, and we talk to our team that's at NASA Houston and also control centers all around the world where we talk about the day. And then for the rest of the day, we are doing science. We might be doing cargo missions. A couple weeks ago, or last week, we captured Cygnus, which is a vehicle that's parked just outside, and Zena and I were practicing training on these robotic simulators. Currently, because Cygnus is recently docked, we're doing a lot of cargo ops. And I'm personally looking really forward to that because I ate through all my gochujang, but I heard there's some in a care package in Cygnus. So I can't wait to get that. Um, also a lot of exercise. And then we conclude the day with another planning conference where we talk about the day's events and close out anything that might need to still be done. Thanks for sharing what you do every day up there. Reviewing the question we've collected, the majority are about what you eat, what you wear, and how you sleep in space. Among these, people are curious about how food is stored on the ISS and which meal you have found the most delicious there. The food on board is actually pretty good. It's a, we have a food lab at Johnson Space Center and they do an amazing job finding local ingredients, making the food, dehydrating it and shipping it up here. Um, but with that being said, probably the most favorite thing I have made up here is just things that remind me at home. 
one of my most favorite things to make for my kids. So I love to cook and I love cooking for my family and they love spam and eggs with a side of gochujang. And so that's actually been my favorite thing. You put it in a tortilla, oh, it's, it's so good. Um, but like I said, it, I did run out. So I'm looking forward to the next care package coming up. <laughs> that sounds delicious. It must be such a pleasure to have a tasty meal in space. And I understand the water conservation is critically important on the International Space Station. How is laundry done there? Is there a unique method for washing clothes in space? So we don't actually wash clothes in space. And uh, what that means, it's water is one of the is a really heavy molecule and uh, we find it more cost effective to actually throw away our clothes when they get dirty so we ship up enough clothes to last us for the entire mission and you did mention water and i want to show how water behaves in microgravity because it's also one of the coolest things um, surface tension is the prevailing force up here and what that means is when you see fluid it coalesces into a perfect sphere and it's just a really th cool thing to watch let me show you Whoa. Oh. <laughs> and, th and that's how water behaves in space. Um, a little dangerous because I do like this shirt and I got made a little mess, but I'll have to clean that up later. Uh, that sounds like really smart system. Not doing laundry, throw out all the used, lo used clothes. That's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> It seems that daily oh, yeah. tasks we take for granted on Mars become quite a challenge in space, just like water drop on the uh, ceiling. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next question is about the uh, cargo capture mission you mentioned, you mentioned earlier. So, so a few days ago, I read an article about that cargo capture mission uh, in ISS. Uh, and where uh, in that mission, you played an important role. Uh, so could you tell us more about the significant role you played and what were the responsibilities and uh, challenges involved in that mission? Yes, um, I'd have to say, uh, you know, Z and I played a significant role, but it really pales in comparison to what the ground flight control teams had to do. Uh, we had the easy part, which was uh, piloting the robotic arm that lives outside the space station and to grab the vehicle and then berth it to the space station. And so uh, we use hand controllers very similar to the ones to my right and to my left. And Zena and I worked together to make sure we were being safe, controlled, as we extended that arm to grab the vehicle and bring it in. Uh, this is Sun Young Kim again. <laughs> I would like to ask, ask you next question. As far as I know, Soyuz MS-27 is scheduled to return to Earth this December. After completing your mission, what are your plans? With experience in both the medical and space field, where do you see yourself focusing in the future? You know, I, I don't have a plan too far out, I think. Immediately, I'd love to just spend some time with my wife and my children, catch up with my relationships, and see where my quest for service takes me. I, I think that has me staying here at NASA. I think there's a lot to look forward to, just as Korea has much to look forward to in space exploration, uh, we here are as well. And there's so much we can do with international collaboration, and I'd love to be a part of that. I'm sure whatever you'll do, you'll do great. I'm always cheering for you. Thank you very much. Johnny, Johnny Kim, uh, now I'd like to share very important event with you this time. In Korea, we are preparing for the fourth launch of the Nuri rocket at the end of this November. Nuri is the Korea's first space 
launch vehicle developed by our own technology. This upcoming launch is very significant as this is the first time that Korea private company has participated in the entire process of launch, which marks the beginning of what is called the new space era. Would you like to give some words to those who have prepared for Nuri's fourth launch? I would be honored to. First, I'd like to extend my hearty congratulations to Korea and the uh, Korean Aerospace Administration and everyone that's worked so hard to make that happen. Space flight is very, very difficult. It requires cooperation and collaboration across disciplines and countries. And uh, I want to express how inspiring that is as a Korean American to hear that Koreans are boldly going forward to explore that next frontier and to do it together. It really shows how much cooperation and collaboration, how effective that can be and how much we need that in our world today. And so congratulations to that big step. I know there's gonna be more and you have an entire generation of children to inspire that are going to make our world a better place. Thank you for your sharing. All right, it seems like we need to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. During CASA's first anniversary, May 27th, you shared a video message encouraging people to never lose hope. So what message would you like to give to the next generation dreaming about space exploration? So I talked about never losing hope. I think it's also in part with, being, with not losing hope is, is just continuing to remember why you're doing what you're doing. Whatever your goals are, whether it happens to be being an astronaut or contributing to the space program or anything, as humans, we're gonna falter along the way. Life is always full of challenges and unexpected surprises. And it's not so much how we respond to those events in real time or if we fail. It's about how we get up and the moves we make after that. So I'd like to extend to people, maintain hope, but also have a lot of resilience moving forward. And with hard work and keeping your eye on the prize, remembering why you're doing what you're doing, you'll be surprised with how far you can get. Thank you for Thank you so much. Thank you for taking your time with us today. I wish you good health as you carry out the remainder of your mission. Lastly, I would like to invite you to Korea after you return to ours. Looking forward to seeing you again in Korea. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and have a safe trip back Thank to you. Earth. Thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with me here Thank today. You. And signing off from the International Space Station. Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Bye. We want to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's good. Cool. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.